What's up guys, Nate Petrosky from Narraway Homestead. Today we're talking solar and this new system is getting all wired up. I'm gonna try to actually film a bunch of this stuff and I'll make multiple videos on this so that you guys know how it works, why I did what I did. I'll at least make a one good long YouTube video on it and I'm sure I'll make some follow-up ones because I'm doing things a bit differently than a lot of people do, but Today's video is about the other system because that system is probably, in my opinion, gonna always remain the coolest solar power system I ever built. And I'm not gonna get a chance to film it because it's all going away. So today, this video is all about that system, the history of it, how it works, how it's continuing to work, why I'm upgrading. Let's get into it. All right guys, the whole reason this system is getting disabled is because I want to take my monitoring equipment, put it on the new one, and I also need to take the inverter because as much as I like this inverter, apparently this company no longer makes inverters. So I'm gonna have to do some research, get a permanent inverter, but in the meantime, I can just simply take this, put it over there, and get up and running on that. Let me back up a little bit to uh, March 2020 when I started homesteading. I had a tiny little 200 watt system that I was running on and I was designing this giant system on a very limited budget because I had no income. There was no buildings here other than that one which I put up when I first got here. One of the things I knew that I wanted to do was get power here on the homestead because there's enough stuff to do on a place like this without having to manually do everything that electric can speed up for you so the first thing i did was go on ebay purchase some panels i actually got them from santan solar i just know that that was the seller name they were selling used panels on ebay they had some issues this whole system overall ended up having about 10 grand into each panel is 250 watts when i originally built it i just had three tall by six across which you can actually see those up there are different i bought basically the same panels and added a whole nother leg up there that was because i didn't realize how cloudy it was going to be here and how much more power i needed to bring in so while i was doing that and waiting for stuff to arrive i dug a hole randomly in the middle of the field my camper was sitting right there and i just simply wired uh where is it there he is I just ran from there right to my camper. I dug this hole because I knew I didn't want batteries to get too hot. Originally I had 16 golf cart batteries in here made by Crown. They ended up failing on me because I used them way too hard. So I ended up replacing them with another set of Crown batteries. Different, they're not golf cart ones, at least not traditional golf cart batteries. I took cinder block and I actually used tile mortar because I used to be a contractor and I had a whole bunch of leftover tile mortar and I was like, when am I ever gonna use this? So, and the cinder blocks, I don't remember where they came. I think I brought them with me. One of my trips when I was bringing trash up here. And then I disassembled my old bed in Pennsylvania. I brought all the OSB because I originally built my bed out of OSB because it was this cool camo OSB. Put up this tiny little shed with it covered it in plastic, hoping that the heat generated from the electronics and everything was gonna keep it all dry, plus the fact that I have panels over top of it flashing between each row. Planted some posts. This was just after COVID started. Lumber was really hard to come by. I didn't even build this array very good. I think those are three foot on center, four foot on center. I'm not sure. And, and the wiring, what a mess. Like I just connected stuff together. No routing the wire nicely. I had no power, I wanted power. I was in a hurry and this system, I'm not in a hurry because this one's currently running, so I can actually do things just more how I want to because this system has driven me nuts the way I wired it, ran the wires more than anything. I wired it correctly, I just sloppy. But I was in a hurry, I had no power. And I also had no money. Not no money, but I had a very limited budget. I didn't even have a combiner box. I used an air conditioner disconnect over here. That's what was mounted right there. An air conditioner disconnect that I modified that I would pull quickly to disconnect all the panels once I added the extra panels up on top, it kind of scared me a little bit. So I thought maybe I should have an individual shutoff for each string, which I now have. And I never did finish putting the covers on here, but these basically, I have three panels wired in series, giving me right around 120 volts, I believe. And then they come in and two series are then parallel together. And then that wire is run over to the combiner box. The breaker is sized appropriately for the amperage and then it's combined in the combiner box, goes to the charge controller, 
which I'm hoping I can get into this sometime and see if it gives me info on how much power I've used since it's been running. I'm hoping it tracks that. I don't know. I've never plugged anything in. I got the ethernet cord in here, but I never plugged it in. And then from the charge controller, it goes to the batteries, which are six volt wired up in a 48 volt configuration. From the batteries, we've got a fuse. I also have a shunt in here for monitoring, but from the batteries, I've got that fused and that goes to my inverter. They old Magnusine. These things are made in the USA. This thing weighs like 60 pounds. It's really heavy. All it does is invert 4,400 watts, which I've only ever tripped it once or twice. I think twice. And then from there, it goes to the panel box, which used to be nice and buttoned up. But then I built a garage. Then I wanted power there. So I've got these wires just bugged right out the face. This is all temporary. These things, because I'm using lead acid batteries, you must vent the room that they are in because, you know, hydrogen. So I got an intake at the bottom. I also discovered that the batteries were getting too warm. So I installed an air conditioner for the summertime and I made this window unit into a duct system. And I'm not sure what happened to the pipes that would run it down. I put a little shelf here, still allowing the hydrogen to escape around the batteries, but yet forcing that cool air to go underneath and then come up around the electronics just to help keep everything cool. Once I got rid of my camper, I used to have some internet equipment in here, which is why this is like excessive. Anyway, that's all. What a mess, like, oh my gosh. I'm not doing any of this with my new system. My ground wire ended up being random wire that I stripped all the insulation off of because it was wet and damaged and I just twisted all my ground wires together. The ground rod, the ground rod's under the generator now, but I ran that to a ground rod. This thing's kind of a pain to come in here and check the water levels and stuff. When I had the golf cart batteries originally, I had this platform that would set down there and shift back and forth on some ledger boards and I would be able to work right over top of it. But it'll be nice to have it out of the ground now for maintenance and, and working on anything. Cause you gotta reach over the batteries to like shut off that. That seems kind of sketchy, at least a little bit. My original golf cart batteries cost me about three grand. Inverter was originally two grand, I think. I think that was like 500 bucks. Got that used off of eBay or open boxed off of eBay. I remember the system originally cost me about seven grand and then I upped that number to 10 when I got some extra panels and bought that. And I was literally counting every little screw and everything I did. Well, that's pretty much the system, guys. When I first got that, it ran a camper. I built an outdoor kitchen and I have conduit wire running there and wire running to this building. I added, you know, a couple other small buildings since. The reason I'm upgrading is just that this system is not big enough for what I do. Live streaming constantly, just a lot of equipment. You might not think it pulls that much, but when you run something 24 seven, all this different internet equipment and stuff I've got, it's it ends up being a lot. And then I do kind of run some lights at night. I really didn't ever plan for the homestead to blow up like this and ever need any more power than that. but. It did, and so you know what? I'm just rolling with it. And obviously there's some kind of income that exists that is allowing me to continue doing this. It makes sense. I'm going from a 20 kilowatt battery bank to a 120, like six times more. Upsizing everything, the solar panels, these are old, they do okay. I have about six kilowatts of panels there. I'm gonna end up with somewhere around 24, 25 on this system once it's all done. I only have a 15-ish up there on the roof right now. They're new panels. I've already noticed while using them that they are pulling in more on cloudy days than these do. And this is really only a three kilowatt system because my charge controller can only handle three kilowatts in. So on a super sunny day, I can only bring in so much. This new system is gonna be different. But the reason I put all these panels on here was to try to get away from having to have a bigger battery bank. And just throughout the day, whether it's cloudy or not, bring in more power through the clouds just because I have double the panels that the charge controller is rated for. And it worked out good for what it is, but I've just been adding stuff and I wanna go big enough that, and I still, I'm still gonna have to watch my usage to an extent, although it's gonna be way different. And right now I'm currently using this system, switching between portable power stations all the time. Um, there's a lot of legwork behind just making sure everything having power and then charging the power stations individually. It's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of stuff but it's allowing me to get away with using extra power. I also run the generator somewhat on this, which is also a pain because then you gotta have fuel for it and maintain it and change the oil. And it's just all kinds of stuff. And I'm trying to save myself time. Electric's supposed to save me time, which it does, but it kind of feels like it doesn't on this system anymore because I just use more than it was designed for and more than what it's capable of producing. So great starter system. I'm really glad I had it. That whole ray is going to be removed. I will turn it into 
probably smaller systems somewhere else. I may barter it to somebody, someone's interested. I'm going to build a lean-to off of this garage that will be similar. Instead of being a south-facing array on this part, it'll be southeast-facing. Catch the morning sun and then the southwest up on the roof will catch the afternoon sun. So I should have a whole day of power coming in as opposed to this one, which I have three panels around the corner. Those three catch the evening sun, bring in about 600-ish watts, which is enough to kind of float me until the sun actually goes down. And then I start getting into the battery bank. So it's been a really cool system. It was custom designed and built by me for a specific purpose. And it has to be used in a certain way. You use certain things during a certain time of day, but it worked and it worked really good. And I'm so happy I built it and it gave me power out here because the grid electric is a half mile away. And they told me it costs 20 grand. It's probably closer to 30 grand now to actually run that out here. And then I have a power bill and unreliable electric because power goes out here all the time. I hear the neighbor's generator running more than I'd like to hear. So most of my neighbors would like to get solar too if they don't already have it. Um, just as a backup, just because of this area, you know, we get a lot of trees, they go down in power lines. There's not a lot of people that live back on this road. All that good stuff. But anyway, that's the system. I have another video, an older video, more of a walkthrough through it probably, but that's kind of a basic walkthrough. I'll talk about all the details of everything in an upcoming video on the new system, what component each does what, why I chose it. I'll talk a little bit about the old system because I'm using a lot of stuff that's the same brand in there. So, and I also have redundancy. I'll talk about lead acid batteries versus lithium iron phosphate or lithium ion or all the different options that are currently available right now. I did go with lead acid, but we have another battery bank that is lithium iron phosphate as well. So I'm actually, I love my lead acid. I really do. There's not much to go wrong. You know, when it goes wrong, it usually goes wrong slowly if it's manufactured properly. It's the same with any battery you get, no matter what the technology. It's only as strong as the manufacturer who made the connections and built the thing and made sure everything was good. All right, guys, that's going to be it for now. That's the old solar system, the old solar power system. Solar system, I act like it's this grand thing. It is grand, though. Give me power for five years. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Quiet on me true, my scarf is in